Welcome to CryptoWise. My name is Marvin, and I am here with your other host, Milton. What is up, my friend? Today is a big, big show, Milton. Today we are talking about Solana. If you are like Milton and you hold a bag of Solana, or you are like me and you are involved in the Solana ecosystem, NFTs, gaming, whatever it is, you're going to want to stay tuned for this show because we are diving deep into find out. Are we holding, hodling, or are we selling Solana? And what is happening, what we believe is going to happen to Solana in the future. So make sure to stay tuned for this entire episode. Milton, it is so good to be back with you, my friend. You too, Marv. We're actually in the same place, in the same room, talking crypto. Doesn't get better than this. Doesn't get better than this. And we're not beating each other up because it is like spring. It is exactly like spring. If you are a bear and you are in your cave, then you are starting to smell the flowers blossom because crypto is heating up and it's starting to get very exciting again. Starting to get very exciting again. I want to jump right into the news here, Milt. There's a lot happening. So let's talk about some of the latest headlines that are happening in the news today. Let's do it. Rapid fire crypto news. We're just going to go through some of the big stories that we're thinking about and reading about. You go first there, Marv. All right. Well, the first story I want to talk about is obviously a lot of talk about arbitrage. Arb, arb, arb. Well, crypto scammer gets away with $1.2 million in ARB tokens through address poisoning attack. Okay. And this is what he's doing. He's targeting ARB wallet holders. So if you're an ARB wallet holder, you want to look deeper into this. Uh, he's got over 600 different crypto wallets that he's attacked so far, 930,000 ARB tokens worth over 1.2 million and counting. And so a big hack taking place on ARB. So make sure to protect your stuff, your wallets and take a look and stay tuned as to what's happening with ARB. Arba trim, you mean? And obviously, uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, Arba trim. I, I, uh, I gotta say, I was just really upset that I didn't get the uh, I didn't get the airdrop. You tried hard. I tried hard. I did not get it. All right, my first story is what everyone was talking about yesterday. That is the government, the U.S. government, sold over two hundred fifteen million dollars in Bitcoin. Uh, that was March fourteenth. They sold that, and guess what? Nothing happened to the price. It actually went up. Nothing. But they are saying that they have over 41,000 more Bitcoin to sell, uh, and they're going to be selling that over the next year. That is over a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. So just keep that in mind. The U.S. government, they are going to be selling a ton of Bitcoin this year. What is that going to do to the price? Are we worried? Are we not worried? Personally... I'm not too worried about this, uh, but uh, something to keep an eye on for sure. Interesting, interesting. I mean, the fact that it wasn't affected, that gives me hope. Oh, that yeah. gives me a lot of hope. All right. If you're living under a rock or you are a bear in a cave, well, maybe you haven't heard yet, but Daquan, fugitive crypto crash boss, was arrested finally in Montenegro, okay? Daquan was the founder of Luna and Terra, and he was finally caught in Montenegro by U.S. authorities and Interpol and is currently being held. Um, there was an arrest warrant for him. As you know, he was a fugitive for a while on the hunt. And he was saying, I mean, he was still public on Twitter, basically saying, I'm not hiding. I'm, I'm just traveling. Uh, but they finally found him and it looks like he's going to be extradited. Well, they find they found him in a pretty uh, remote spot too. This just so. goes to say that you can't really hide. Okay, like it is very very difficult these days. If you, Daquan had a few billion dollars and he still couldn't get away. Yeah, and he, Montenegro. I don't know what the hell he was doing there or what led him there, but it'll be really interesting as this story unravels to find out more of the details. You know what I like about it? It feels like we're cleaning up the 2022 mess. We Let's all. just clean it up, get it behind us, and move forward. I agree. All right, my next story here is about Yuga Labs. Now, Yuga are the uh, team, the company behind. Love these uh, guys. Board Ape Club, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest NFT projects uh, ever. And so they created a company uh, behind that, and uh, they're called Yuga Labs. They just hired, this is a big deal, all right? They hired the former COO of Activision Blizzard, and he's going to step into the CEO role over at Yuga Labs. Uh, you know, the mainstream kind of, uh, you know, like uh, the, the, uh, these NFT projects becoming actual huge uh, companies, IP, uh, you know, IP with huge value. Um, this is a big step. And in a huge NFT 
bear market, you're seeing big moves like this, big, serious people coming in to run big NFT projects. Big news, in my opinion, you've got, uh, what's his name here? We should shout him out. Um, Daniel. Daniel Allegra. Allegra. Right. Wow. Yeah. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Bored Apes. Have you been watching them through this entire bear? I mean, there were some exciting times where I was just really wanting to come in and grab one or two. I know. I was looking at it, too. but uh, I still do. I still want one. I still want to say that I have one. If I had a lot more ETH than I currently do, I might have swooped in and got something. I'm I definitely... I still have... And we're going to be talking NFTs later in the show because we're going to be talking a lot about Solana and whether we're going to hold it or sell it. But... NFTs. I got. I got one eye on my NFTs still. Okay. I, I'm, I'm really looking at a lot of one those eye. collections that are are, are, are beaten up, and uh, I'm definitely going to be adding to my collection. I'm still hugely bullish on NFTs as well, and we're going to talk a lot about that. And one more story from my side, and this isn't even. Come on, guys. Like everyone knows, XRP is surging. There is a lot of rumors. There's a lot of buzz. Uh, investors are looking again at the futures market tied to payment focused cryptocurrency XRP amid hopes that Ripple Labs, uh, which in the U.S. argues it it issued its token, will win its legal battle against the SEC. Now, there's big things happening here. It's up 57 percent since March 22nd. I see that it's down a little bit today. But look at those charts. I mean, it is really, really, really ripping. So, you know, my whole thing goes back to Milt. People, obviously, you know, some people right here. Some people know something we don't know. Yeah, right? That is the really interesting thing when you see these things pump before there's any news and you're like, okay, something is going on. Someone knows something. I got to say, look, I don't have any. I've never had XRP. I've never had XRP. Kind of like when I got into crypto, uh, kind of 2016, 17, around there. And uh, XRP definitely was kind of one of those projects. You either loved it or you just weren't in on it. I was always just kind of not in on it. But you got to tip your cap to them. I mean, unbelievable. They're really fighting the SEC here. And if they win this case, it's going to be huge for crypto all over. So, uh, look, even though I'm not part of the Ripple army or whatever they call themselves, uh, you know, I'm Would happy you chase for them. Ripple right now? No, 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 no. You I, won't be chasing it. I can't chase that. that I agree. That pump. But I agree. Um, look at that pump. Unreal. I'm happy for them. I'm happy for the Ripple holders. I hope. I you know I'm happy for crypto. If if they are successful in their fight against the SEC, it's big news for crypto as well. Now this is this is one thing that I'm hoping for the future of crypto is this next bull run whenever it comes. Can we just all be friends more in crypto? <laughs> like uh, all this like infighting between chains. I'm a Ripple this. I'm a Luna that. I'm a this. I'm a that. That's just like it's all good. Like come on, let's I all know, build this space have, together. You, I agree, but you still have to have pride. I mean, you can enjoy hockey, you can enjoy soccer, but you still have your team. Yeah, but it's not like we're not. It's, they're not competing in games. They're competing in the world of crypto. I know, but They're at this stage, in I still share. think, I still think in at users. this stage in crypto, it's when one crypto does well, it's good for the whole industry. I agree industry. with that. I maybe with that. maybe 10 years from now, we can have some wars. But look, you know me. I'm Team Dot. All right. That's my fave. Uh, you're not alone in that. And, and we're going to talk uh, more about that as we continue. Yeah. But I don't, I can still spread the love to everyone else. Absolutely. All right. So my last uh, piece of uh, news here is we got to talk about El Salvador. What when, happened to them? Well, look, they announced, you know, how long ago? Was this two years it ago is, now? It was a while. Time. Wow. Yeah. They announced that uh, Bitcoin is going to be legal tender in that country, and they did it. And everyone was saying it's not going to work. It's going to ruin the country. I mean, he looks pretty that. happy. Well, they're going even further. <laughs> they just announced this new tax law here. They're giving tax breaks to for tech, tech innovation. So this is crypto, but it's also AI. It's also any sort of kind of computer software, uh, programming, hardware manufacturing, anything to do with tech. Essentially, you're going to be paying no tax. No, wow. No property tax, no capital gains, uh, no import tariffs. So look, I don't know. I was I was looking at El Salvador when they announced the Bitcoin thing, and now you're you're looking at this. I, next time you talk to me, Mark, I caught you I, looking at some real estate. I might be in El I Salvador. Thought, yeah, I mean, at some point, you got to look at this and be like, is this the place to live? <laughs> and look, 
since they've done this, it's actually done really well for them. Their tourism's up 30%, mostly people from the U.S. You know, they're bringing in a lot of uh, tourism dollars. Those numbers are there. hard to quantify because, you know, we also had COVID, right? And so hopefully tourism is going to be up as well. But, and I guess for me, it's, yeah, it's exciting. And I really love what they're doing. Am I going to move to El Salvador? Probably not. But I think that this is, you know, we all thought that this will create a trickle effect to other countries to potentially do the same. And I still think that might be the case. Well, especially since it seems to be going actually pretty well. And considering we're in a huge bear market right now, crypto winter, and it's still going well. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm keeping my eye on El Salvador. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on We'll keep an eye on it. Maybe you can do a show from down there and let us know what the hell's happening on the ground. But today we are talking about Solana. We want to dive into this, Milt, because a lot of people are asking. I'm asking myself. You and I talk about it quite a bit. You've still got significant bags. In significant. Salon. I, I, you know, I got rid of most of my soul bags. Not happy about it. It, it, it. You know, they were way, way, way down. But obviously with what happened with FTX and what's going on in the market, I mean, look at this. This is a zoomed out all-time chart of Solana. And I'm just peeking up here, up at the top here, at $260 here, Milt. Oh, I know. Dude, like, do you remember those me. days? I, I remember <laughs> sitting on a couch with you and we both had our laptops open, looking at it at 260 going, it's going to hit 400 Yeah, I mean, uh, th it's interesting to look at some of these charts and when you've lived through the whole chart. Yeah. Like Solana, I lived People through lived the very beginning about this. Like even at the very beginning of Solana, people were like, it's going to be faster. It's going to be an ETH killer, this and that. And obviously our uh, old friend Sam Bankman Freed was all about Solana from the very beginning, obviously because he was pumping it and dumping it and uh, doing all sorts of uh, so, shitty things. But um, I but remember when it, I remember when it first hit kind of 40 bucks, you know, in uh, May of 21 thinking, wow, okay. And then it came back down and when it hit kind of the 25 range again, we, this was kind of early 22 uh, or summer of 21. Yeah. I remember August. thinking, uh, am I going to get some? And I didn't, but then when the NFTs took off on Solana and you and I got heavy into the NFTs, on Solana, then I ended up accumulating a lot of Solana because I wanted to buy and sell NFTs. And then, you know, you start saking some Solana. And so, yeah, I've got, this is the big question for me. And this is the question of today's show. What, I, what am I going to do with my Solana? Am I going to sell it? Am I going to sell some of it? Am I going to hold it? And the reason we got to talk about this is there was some big news in the Solana ecosystem recently. We all know that the big thing about Solana, really, it was never really a DeFi chain, never really took off. Sam Bankman Freed tried to, really, you know, he was, you know, there was uh, Radium and uh, all, all, all the DeFi and he was trying to sell it as that at first. And that's what we saw because of the transactions that maybe it could compete with Visa or whatnot. But then it really became an NFT chain. That was its big kind of advantage over ETH was you could really do NFTs quite cheaply, buy them, sell them, transact on them. Well, big news this week is the Utes NFT, which also are the D-Gods. They also have D-Gods on Solana, the two biggest NFT collections on Solana. They're moving to Polygon. Wow. So they started moving to Polygon this week. Most, you know, most of the holders have moved over to Polygon. Other thing we got to talk about here is Matt. So Solana really had two major th applications that really did really well and worked really well and were awesome. One of them was the Phantom Wallet, which was great. And the second thing was the market, the NFT marketplaces that were competing with OpenSea. One of them, Magic Eden, kind of took over and it was a great marketplace. And it was a Solana marketplace, which was really helping the Solana ecosystem. Well, now they've got ETH. They've got Polygon on it now, and they even got the Bitcoin uh, NFTs on there now. So really, you know, eventually Magic Eden could really just move over and totally it's, get rid of Soul if they really wanted well, to. it's possible. I doubt it. I they're, mean, this I is worst case scenario we're talking about. Interestingly we're, enough, when talking about D-Gods, right? Look at this. Floor price of 930. Look at their all-time chart. And surprisingly, look at what happened during the downturn. So they had, yeah, okay, they had some, they had a significant pop up to 600. I remember D-Gods, like when I was really looking at them, they were in the three range, 290 to three range. Uh, when I seriously took thought about buying some at that time, because I'd already missed the big pump. But look at what's actually happened. When you compare this to ev and other NFT projects, Milt, it's almost at a floor of a thousand. Yeah. Like it's had done significant gains over the last few months and a steady, steady growth chart. 
with high volumes. Unbelievable what D-Gods has done. Oh, they've done really, really well. Um, also, if you look at uh, kind of the top, if you look at the the, the top of N- NFT collections on Solana, so if we just go into um, the stats here on Solana Magic Eden, you'll see D-Gods and Utes or Yotes, uh, they're, they're one and two. Happy to see my OK Bears are up there. Yeah, I got one of those. I'm happy to see my OK Bears are up there. I hope to see WATW up there sometime soon. I really hope so, too. And we can talk about that, too, uh, at some point on the show, because obviously uh, we talked a lot about them when they were launching and, and stuff. And I, I I hold a bunch still. I love I, I love a lot of things about them. I love that them, collection. But, um, I love it. And I love I love. Right them. now, they're kind of uh, dormant. And you see... But pro- as are 90%, 95 98% of all oh, NFT yeah, projects, they're, especially they're on Solana. I mean, you can't just, you know, you can't put them in a box like no, that. No, no. So... But they aren't alone, but it, but it, even more so than to give the props to D gods and Yotes. absolutely. And but you're looking at one and two Solana collections. They're moving to Polygon. I know. So that is uh, know. That's, that's really massive. that's that's trouble there and uh, for Solana. So really, if you look at Solana had built last bull run, Solana had really built an advantage of all other layer ones. They were clearly number two behind ETH. Yep. Yep. A lot of that was the NFTs. That's gone down. Uh, and now you have a ton more uh, competition for Solana. If you if we look even like just through this last year. I think it's going to be tough. I got to be honest, Mel. I think it's going to be really tough right now for Solana, especially in this next run, to really separate itself. It's coming off of some major battle wounds. And as you say, a lot of projects are moving on. And I'm hearing in the communities, a lot of devs on the gaming side have decided to stop developing on Solana and yeah. move to They are going down on chains. devs. And that's a problem. That's the opposite of what you want to see. You see Polkadot increasing its dev movement you see a lot of these are getting a lot of traction in their dev movement and their prices are still the same but they're preparing for their scaling they're growing whereas solana it feels like it still hasn't it still hasn't gotten down to where it's going to hit before it can start rebuilding properly well i think they are i'm not talking look, price wise i just mean you know in itself as a as an ecosystem I think there's still pain to be had before they can. Really- I don't know because that FTX pain was huge. No, no, when no. When FTX went down, yeah. I don't know that you're going to have. But as- now you're getting the ripple effect pain. You know, when you have an earthquake, you have an aftershock. Yeah. The FTX was the earthquake. Honestly, for me, I think like- it's less. It's less about another big thing like that. And it, my concern is it just going to slowly dwindle. Well, that's what I mean. When you're seeing D gods, when you're seeing the NFT space start to shift, when you're seeing the gaming space start to shift, and then you take into account the fact that soul had a lot of outages and, and some challenges. I just think it's so long-term for me, I think Solana is going to, ha- is, is not going anywhere and it's going to rebuild itself. So, the but question when, is, when you talk about rebuild, yeah. What are you saying there? Like, do you, th- see it being a top five chain again it, it's a tough one top five i i, I don't feel confident let's just throw out five. some let's just throw I, out some other names some like because these are okay so right now i've got a big bag of soul yeah and i'm deciding told you to get rid of it a few times i know you did i know you did <laughs> but look everything went down so sure, like sure. soul went down and a to bit be fair, and went down more sense. obviously yeah. but um so you got, let's just list some names and say, would you rather have that or soul? Okay. Polygon. Polygon. You'd rather have Polygon. Yeah. Right now, I would rather have Polygon. So let's just go through the uh, layer two. So there's Polygon, Immutable X. You got to say, I probably right now, in terms of just investment and price movement, I think I'm going to do better on Immutable in the short term. Interesting. Interesting. I'm still going soul there. Polygon's tough for me. Immutable is a more high risk play. To, to, to go against, to put it against. But if you look at Immutable's market cap, it like diluted around $2 billion or something and where it plays in against some of its competitors on the layer twos and, and what's happening with it. You know, all of the stuff that's being built on it. I think gaming is going to be really, really strong again in this next run. And and games take time. And so if people aren't building, if they're, if Solana's not getting the the... The devs building on it right now and the project's building on it, but Immutable's getting traction, then I'm going to bet on Immutable on that one. 
I, I, this is the thing. I agree that Immutable, I think, is building something great in terms of gaming being the layer two for gaming. I just don't know. I got to dive deeper the into tokenomics. the tokenomics. Yeah. Because a lot of the transaction fees right. goes to the centralized uh, kind of company that runs Immutable X. That's my concern with Immutable right now. That's Long why I'm term. sticking with Soul. Long term. But you were also saying on the Immutable side that they're reinvesting that in into funding a lot of the projects right now they are sure yeah. right now they are so but they get they have a lot who of else, control who over else would that you chain. want to peg on against okay so well let's talk arbitrum then let's say let's see the new boys in town would you go arbitrum or solana i gotta say i'm going arbitrum and not because i'm you know i i don't have any arbitrum right now I was I'm, you know i didn't get any of the airdrop i know you tried you didn't get any but it's also about momentum okay and Solana's coming off of a, sti- a massive stigma, and its momentum has hit uh, is is basically hit a wall. Where Arbitrum has just come out as the mountain biggest airdrop, and so much attention, and so many people are focused on it. And it hit even after its airdrop, okay, which had massive sell offs and and sell pressure for a short period of time. It has sustained itself. Look at it; it's strong. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's plateaued. It found its price and it's kind found of stayed price. there. It's kind of stayed there. And the, the volume, last though. I mean, the volumes are, so I the don't. The volume is, is really high. I, as an OG, I would want to bet on Solana, but in the short term, based on the momentum, I would put my bag in, in ARP. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm looking at this, say, because I really think the next bull run is going to be, and, you know, like, we're going to be talking a lot about this on the show over the next year. Right. Yeah, of course. The Bitcoin having, this is the Bitcoin. So this change, depending on what you look at, it changes by a couple of days here, but we're looking at approximately 392 days before the having. So I'm thinking that we've got a, a year, 18 months is kind of the window I'm looking at for touching 18 months really is what I'm looking at for kind of the next real kind of hype cycle, seeing all time highs and stuff like that. So this question for me right now is what I want. Do I think at that time I want soul or these? So guys? you're talking about holding, you're talking about an 18 month period yeah. because I'm talking about more the short term. I see. Right? I don't, I, I'm, when I say short term, I'm talking next three, six months, the start of the, ne- the next. I hope I'm wrong, but I don't see alts moving all that much for the next year i see volatility i see i i believe we're gonna have some pumps but i i don't think it's gonna stabilize i don't think we're gonna i think be we'll in this- have like 20 percent pumps i don't see any we'll see. x's in, for another year or i so think you're us. wrong i think we're already seeing some x's but anyways that's a whole nother debate i you know when you go back to solana i don't want it to go anywhere i love solana they were the first to mainstream everything we both have a pair of solana shoes for- Right. Yeah. You, we're talking about ordering Solana phones. I mean, look, we're deeply involved in the Solana ecosystem of NFTs. I don't want anything bad to happen. I'm just solely talking about from my my portfolio and my investment bags on this next run. I'm not that bullish yet. I'm not gonna, convinced. Well, you yet. brought it up. So I, let's talk about this, because honestly, this is one of the reasons why I think I am going to hold. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, the saga, it's it's the saga, the saga. Uh, this is Solana. I think this is the one thing they, they do really well. They put in the pipeline as you know, before they started going down, they put in the pipeline. This is a huge risk. This is them trying to hit a home run here. They're the first ones going into mobile. And they didn't partner with anyone else. They were like, we're going to build our own, but it's going to be a full Android phone. Uh, and it's going to be they the should have first called Ryan Reynolds. It's going to be the first. Oh yeah. He's partnering with everyone these days, but they're going to be the first crypto native mobile phone. And to me, this is really where they could separate themselves. If this takes off and they, you know, because, and they really kind of have a bit of a, you know, a good lead in terms of taking crypto to the mobile space. To me, that could be big. It could be really big. And and again, this is what Solana does really, really well is they take crypto mainstream. They've been the best at it out of anybody. And so it's possible. I, do I, I don't know if they're going to be a major mobile player or not. But one thing's for sure is they're mainstreaming crypto by bringing mobile device and, and all And they're going to be the first to market. 
and they're going to be the it's first something to market. Different. But they were the first it's to market. It's different though. See, this is what you're They were the co- first to market on the and they had the best they had they had the market share when it came to NFTs and then you look again, you go back and you look at Magic Eden which was all built on Soul and now I can do ETH, I can do Polygon, I can even do Bitcoin. Like I agree with you. They're very very and that's why I have hope for them. The well, market. they've been That's working. why I don't think they're going anywhere. I think it's I think this is going to be boom or bust for them is this phone. I don't because think, I think if, it's if you're like, basing it off the phone, then I would I would I would sell your bags now. Well, I think it could I think it's gonna work because think about it. I think it's everyone gonna, is on phones. Yes. No one is no one you know Do you like, really think you're gonna compete against Apple and Samsung? They're not trying to. Well, I mean you are. If 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 no, they're hitting up the crypto market. I understood. I'm getting this phone. But so that means you're leaving iPhone. No, I'm not leaving iPhone. I'm going to have a crypto phone. Just for your crypto? Yeah. You're going to be the guy with clips all over your belt and phones. Yes. Sticking out. And you go, you're this telling is my me, crypto phone. You, you, you're telling me you wouldn't rather have a crypto native phone to do all your crypto stuff safely in a much fair. more That's secure a way a fair and, off, and not worry about it on I, your regular I th- phone? I think in theory, yes, I agree with you. But it, we're 2023. You got to look at technology. Everything's about consolidation. A smart device, you do everything on one device. So I have it. Ch- I find it. Ch- I agree with you. You yes, can still use this. Crypto. You can still but use this. But long term, don't you think that the answer is not to have two devices, that the answer is to have one device that does everything you want? Yes. And I think everyone else is going to, once it, once it works, this one might if not work. If this works, you don't think Apple's going to say, let's make it so of that. Of course. Our, yeah. But if these guys are first to market with it and they prove the concept, sure. you're not telling me that Solana's gonna, not going to do well ne- in the next 18 months? Well, yeah, possibly. I mean, are you are you out there buying BlackBerry stock right now? I still own my BlackBerry <laughs> stock. <laughs> yeah, because you bought <laughs> every bag you've invested in for the life of time. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying this. This is what I'm saying. I'm talking about the next year to two fair years. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I think it's a, from a marketing perspective. Because this is the other question about whether to hold Solana or sell Solana is all the other ones you're talking about is I could take my Solana bag and then just split it into six or whatever, get some Arbitrum, get some Polygon, get some... Um, uh, what you know? What what Aptos? Yeah, Sui when it comes out. I can- let me ask, let me put it to you because you put it to me before. I'm gonna list a few names. All right, and I want you to tell me: Would you rather own Soul or these? Okay, Bitcoin. Well, no, 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 no. I just want to know. To me, that's it's like apple and oranges. I'm of course I'd rather have Bitcoin. But if you're if- holding bags of Soul, then you could have more Bitcoin. I'm just putting it out there. Ethereum. I have okay. So I'm talking about. Where it fits into my portfolio. Okay. Eth- eth- why? Well, because I have. Ethereum. I have the amount of Bitcoin. I have the You're percentage of Bitcoin, Bitcoin. I, in terms of the percentage of my portfolio. All right. Portfolio. Then I'll give you the same. Polygon. I'm going, I'm going Solana still. <laughs> You're an OG loyalist. I love it. I mean, look, I, I respect it. I respect it. Okay. Fair enough. I mean, they're head up. They're heads up. Nine and 10 right now. Nine and 10. Polka dot. Oh, dot. Come so you on. don't you you would rather keep that bag of soul than have more dot right now? That's what you're. Well, because I have a you have a big of dot. ass bag of soul. I have a big ass bag of. So dot. I guess what I'm saying is, you don't have to get rid of all your soul, but would you rather have more dot or more soul? I have enough dot. I like putting it to melt because I mean, <laughs> you got to really put them in a corner to get real. No, because I'm looking right now. I'm looking. I'm I'm looking at this percentage of portfolio i still have more percentage of dot than i have soul slight yeah okay but but i have you have a lot i have more soul soul is number four that's huge though that's a huge 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 bag so but i'm still leaning soul on these the honestly the one that i would say the ones that i'm looking at are kind of the I like the kind of post type sleepers, right? Like, so like to the me, Aptos of the world. No, like Aptos to me is still in the hype cycle. I'm talking about something like Near Protocol, right? Yeah, we, you and I had talked a lot about Near off uh, offline here for quite a quite quite some time now. Phantom, Phantom is a huge post hype that has ha, could be boom or bust. Yeah, I gotta go. I gotta go bust on Phantom. Uh. Me. I, I would even put, um, in terms of like layer ones or twos or zeros, I mean, even it's tough. 
what you know this is the what about this 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 uh caspa yeah i know but yeah okay caspa's okay. been pumping it's pumping been pumping. pumping i'm not gonna chase it though that's the thing it's already like i don't recommend chasing this these candles are not candles you want to chase. Lo long term, I think Casp is doing some great things. But short term, I mean, look at that. That is not something I'm going to chase right now. The interesting thing about chasing, though, now. It's still really early. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Like, it's bear market. Bear. And you're like, okay, is this the beginning of something? Because sometimes I was like, I'm not going to chase. I'm not going to chase. But you're also saying that you don't, you think we're looking, we still got a long ways to go here. Yeah, I do. And so if that's the case, there's going to be volatility. And yeah, I'm not yeah. going to chase a candle. I'm not going to buy it right now, for sure. But in terms of... It's still only a 1 billion fully diluted cap. So it's not like, yeah, it is still, is, you know, it's still quite reasonable when you look at it. We are on a bear. I agree with you on that. Do I think long term, it's a bad buy right now if you're going to hold this bag for the next 24 months? No, I think it's a good one. But I think there's better buying opportunities to get into. I think you'll be able to get into Caspa at a better price, potentially, uh, if, if you don't have a bag just yet, I wouldn't chase those candles. That's all. What about this as a wild card? Uh-oh. Clayton. I don't know. I don't know. That is a wild card. Uh, so I'm holding my Solana right now, but I, this is, so this is okay. You want to know my final decision? I want to know. Everyone wants to know. We're all sitting, biting our nails. What is your final decision? I agree with you that I should sell some of my Solana. Hey, hey, guys. I have my, I have too much Solana. It stuff. is a miracle. It is like the gods have come down and finally shed some light into milk. But I'm brain. only going to sell 20% of it. Fair enough. Listen, that's a start. When you have a hoarder, you can't do it all at once. It's it's dangerous for you. We need to bring a therapist. We need to sit on the couch. And this is, but this is where people are not going to like this. Uh oh. I think I'm going to hold it on the sidelines because I think there's going to be a dip coming before. Ah, I agree with you. I, I I don't think that's a bad move at all. And then, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to do some more research on these. I'm going to see if there's if something like an Arbitrum has a huge dip or a Polygon, then. That's where I would I would put I do want a layer two. Yeah. You need a yeah, I agree. I, I don't have a layer I don't have an Ethereum layer two in my portfolio. And right I think now. we're gonna we're gonna talk about that next week. We'll dive deeper onto layer twos and what we think and, and maybe some moves that we'll make on that. Because I agree with you. I if you don't have layer twos in your portfolio right now, then that's a that's a solid next move. I do think I, I don't think I I think we still have upward movement here before we get some downside. So I, I you know, I do see Bitcoin breaking 30K and holding it for a bit. Um, and I do see some alts reacting positively here in the coming weeks. Now, over the next two months, I think you're right. I think there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be some dips. I don't think we're there yet. I mean, this this chart scares me a bit. This is the Bitcoin dominance chart. Yeah. So according to this chart, I mean, it's the dominance of Bitcoin has been going up, you know, like crazy since uh march right so oh this is i'm on the 15 minute i i need to get to at least the hourly here look at this but even better just go on the daily uh see what's going on here so yeah look at this pump for the bitcoin dominance Huge, yeah. since uh you know march 9th ish oh so a day before the bank sell off <laughs> yeah since the, yeah, that was when the, the, That's the bank thing was happening. And so you would look at this chart and think, okay, dominance can't just keep going, can it? But if we break this last peak, which was about 48%, that, you know, it seems like we can. And that's around has, the 30K window. That's what I'm saying. It has a run to 60, you know, we could see dominance go up to 60% here again. I mean, that was the last kind of big run, which was in March 21. Yeah. Bitcoin dominance was up at 60%. If dominance goes back up to about 60% from, from the 50 range, then I don't see alts, you know, obviously I don't see alts moving anywhere. But because Bitcoin dominance has had such a huge move, you could argue to the other side that it needs to come down, which means alts will have a move up. I'm betting more that Bitcoin is going to be the mover uh, the next. I think there's two, you know, there's two, there's two buckets here of people, right? You've got the people that have powder, they've been on the sidelines and they're like, okay, so, you know, this is a bear. This is people, you know, we're saying it's a good time to start entering the market if you haven't. And then you've got the other people 
that are in the bucket where the majority of their portfolio is already assigned. They've already got their coins. They don't have much powder. And so what are you doing, right? And I want to talk about that this week is how do you maneuver with a portfolio when you're already sitting and all your money's in the market? What kind of moves are we making? Because you're not alone, by the way. That's the vast majority of the crypto space. Yeah, and the this powder is, is in. This is where these kind of questions. That's why today's show was really me reflecting on my port, looking at my portfolio, saying, "Should I sell some of my soul and put it into something else?" That I think is what people should be doing right now: is re like reallocate, uh, making sure that their portfolio has the allocations that they want in each kind of thing. A hundred percent, and that's a tough thing to do, especially when you're a hoarder like Milt. Oh, I'm a hoarder. <laughs> I am a hoarder. One thing's for sure is that Milton and I are committed and we are back to the Crypto Wise channel. I know there was a bit of a hiatus. We came back and forth, but we are really going to make a really strong effort to come up with as much content for you guys as we can and be as real with you guys as we can along the journey together. And so please, if you haven't already, smash the like button. It really helps our channel. Subscribe to it. We need you guys. And uh, and make sure to hit that little bell so that you get real-time updates because we're going to be dropping a lot of content over the next few weeks, and we want to do this together. Be a part of the CryptoWise family with us. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Smash that like, guys, because we've been away for a long time, so uh, we really need those likes right now so people know that we're back. We do. We need them back, and I'm I'm happy to be back, you know? I don't. All I, I want to do is talk crypto twenty four seven, and life gets in the way, the world gets in the way. But this is what I love doing most. If you're not full time crypto, you know a lot of the world's got to be out there making powder so that they can put it back into crypto. Oh yeah, the real world's tough, guys. Lots of curveballs, but exciting times ahead. We talked about Solana today, tomorrow, and the rest of the week. We're going to be diving deeper into layer twos and all sorts of fun stuff. Of course, Polkadot, because that is our beloved. We haven't talked much about it. We miss you. We love you. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, Milt. See you, Marv.